I used to be a serial overpacker. Like my normal amount of luggage was one giant overstuffed checked bag that was usually over the weight limit, another rolling carry-on bag that was stuffed to the brim, as well as a backpack or personal item that was also stuffed with stuff for like a one week trip. And packing heavy is stressful. If you're checking a bag, you're worried about being over the weight limit, and then you get to your destination and you're like, oh, I'm so excited to be here, but then you have like a hundred pounds of bags to lug around with you. I'm a much lighter packer now than I was five years ago, and today I'm sharing my tips for traveling light. My first tip for traveling light is to plan out every single outfit that you're going to wear. And this has been the single most effective thing I've done to lessen my luggage. In the past, I would pack my suitcase by item and not by outfit. Like I would look in my closet and I would think like, I like this top and like, this is a cute blouse and this is a nice sweater. And I would just pack those items without considering how I was actually going to wear them. And I would always end up packing way too much. So now what I do, honestly, this is so helpful. If you haven't tried this, you definitely should on your next trip. I take a piece of paper or a notepad. I usually like draw almost like a grid, like different boxes on it. I don't know why I do this this way. You could also make it a list, but I like to make boxes. And then hypothetically, let's say that I'm taking a trip to Los Angeles from Wednesday to Sunday. And based on what I'm going to be doing on the trip, I plan out every single outfit accordingly. So like the first box might say like daytime. And then I usually put a note of the like type of outfit it needs to be. So I'll put like daytime casual or like daytime active if I was going to be like going on a hike. And then in that box, I write down every single thing I'm wearing and I'm very specific about it. Gray Madewell t-shirt, blue Everlane jeans, white APL sneakers. Like I write down every single actual item that I'm going to pack. And then maybe the next day I write daytime, active because I'm going to Disneyland. You will be shocked at how much less you pack when you do this. It is insane, especially because as you create these lists for each day, you can start pulling in items from other days to wear twice. Tip number two is to pack within a certain color palette. This is going to make your life so much easier. I think having a certain color palette for your entire wardrobe makes your life so much easier. I know that that's too boring for some people. When you pack with a coordinating color palette, you can mix and match your items more easily. You can get more wear out of each item and therefore you don't have to pack as much stuff. Number three is stop packing your fantasy self. This is one that I use to be so bad about. If you aren't familiar with the term, your fantasy self, I did a video on this a while ago, but it's basically like the imaginary version of yourself that you would like to be. For example, the first time that I ever went to New York City, I went for a week, I went with a couple of friends and I packed for seven days. I honestly think I packed over 30 tops. And I basically channeled Carrie Bradshaw as I was packing. Like I packed four inch stiletto heels, like multiple pairs of four inch stiletto heels because I'm like, it's New York City. Like I'm gonna dress like they do on TV. But of course, when I got to New York and it actually came time to get dressed and go out sightseeing for a day, what did I wear? I wore flats and sneakers. I didn't have four outfit changes a day where I utilized all 30 tops that I packed. So stop packing your fantasy self and consider what you actually will wear. My next tip is to pack items and fabrics that can be worn more than once. I think denim is really good for this. Like I try not to wash my jeans unless I have to. I heard somewhere, some denim makers said that jeans are never meant to be washed, which I don't know if I could do that, but I definitely like try to let my jeans go between washings. Cause it's like once they break in and they're like molded to you, you don't want to put them through the wash. Cause then like you have to like bring them out and then like do the lunges and you know, you know what you have to do when jeans are straight out of the wash. So I like denim to be worn more than once. I also really like wool, like smart wool products are so amazing for travel. They're designed to be worn for like backpacking for a week straight. Like they are supposed to be so anti-stink that you can wear them many, many times and they won't smell. So I love smart wool. My next tip is to stop catastrophizing over what you might need. It is so easy to pack just in case items for a trip and you almost never actually need those things. Like you overload your suitcase with all of these extras and you get home and you never used any of them. The mentality that I've adopted is unless I am going literally to the middle of nowhere, 
I can probably find anything I absolutely need on that trip if the need arises. My next tip is kind of an interesting one and it's something that I never really thought about until it just kind of happened by accident. And it's to consider the cost of checking a bag versus buying what you need at your destination. Now I know for me, 90% of the time, the reason I would even consider checking a bag is because of liquids. I either have too many liquids that wouldn't fit in a carry-on approved bag, or maybe there's a bottle of something that's just like over the ounces that you could even take in a carry-on. But a few years ago, I took a trip to New York. This wasn't the first trip where I brought every I owned with me. This trip, I decided to just bring a carry-on suitcase because I didn't wanna pay the $30 each way to check a bigger suitcase. But once I got to New York, I was doing a shoot there and I realized that I didn't have a certain hair product that I really liked that gave my hair a lot of volume. And so I went out and bought it. It was like a big bottle and I think it was like 16 or $17. But then a few days later, when it was time to fly home, I couldn't pack this big bottle in my carry-on bag because because it was over the limit for what you could bring in a carry-on. So my only option would be to check it, which would mean paying $30 to check a bag so that I could keep a $16 bottle of hair product. So I ended up just giving the bottle to a friend because it just, cost-wise, it would be cheaper to fly home and then just buy the bottle again than to pay to check that bottle in my luggage. And for the very first time, I was like, it would have cost me $60, $30 each way to check a bag to bring liquids but it only cost me less than $20 to buy supplies while I was here. And I thought it was so interesting because for years I always paid to check bags because of liquids and thinking back, it probably would have been less expensive for me to buy liquids when I got to my destination than to pay the $60 checking a bag to bring them with me. Now, granted, I was lucky that I had a friend that I could give the product to because I would have felt weird buying a product and like using it for three days and then like, throwing it away, I guess, because I didn't want to bring it home. So like, I'm not advocating, like just don't bring stuff and buy it and then toss it, because that feels really wasteful. But if there is something that you're considering paying to check on your trip, think about like, could you buy it when you get where you're going and could you use it to the full extent or use most of it up before you come home? My next tip is to break down whatever you can into smaller quantities. So if you're packing vitamins, don't pack the entire jar of vitamins, like portion some out into a reusable bag or like a little pill container. Don't bring a giant jar of moisturizer, get a little tiny jar and just portion some out into it. Tip number nine is to consolidate your chargers. And one of the best ways to do this is to get a USB USB hub. There are tons of different options for these on Amazon. I have a really cool one that's also like an international adapter. So you can plug any kind of international plug into it. And then it also has four USB chargers on the top. So I can charge five things out of it at once. We've all stayed places where there's like only one outlet in a room. Then you don't have to find a whole bunch of different outlets for all of your things anyway. And then my 10th and final tip for packing less is to consider washing your clothes while you're on your trip. This is something that I used to be so averse to. Like I would go on a two and a half week trip and I'd be like, I can't do laundry. Like I have to pack enough clothes for all two and a half weeks. It's actually not as bad as it seems. At the very least, you can get a little bottle of like travel laundry soap to wash like socks and underwear and delicates in a sink. Stuff that you definitely don't wanna wear multiple days in a row or multiple times on your trip. Um, you can just wash that stuff so you don't have to pack so much of it. So those are my tips for packing less and traveling light. If you have any tips for not bringing everything you own with you on a trip, let me know what they are down in a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I use Squarespace to run my blog and it is so easy. It's an all-in-one platform. You can build any kind of site on it. You can have a store, you can have a portfolio, you can have a travel blog like, I do. Something that I really like for my site is I can geotag my posts to the location that they're about. They have 24 seven customer service and so many beautiful layouts to choose from. So head over to squarespace.com to sign up for a free trial. And then when your site is ready to go, you can visit squarespace.com slash Allison Anderson to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys are doing well. I have lots of exciting content coming your way. So Stay tuned for lots of videos coming up and I will see you in the next one. Bye.